We're live! Oh, hooray! We made it! It's, it's been so long! <laughs> it's happening! <Welcome>. It's happening! <laughs> Welcome if you are new here, and many of you are because this is our first time actually streaming directly to YouTube. Welcome. Hi, my name is Brenna. I am your cup runneth over DM and welcome to Tales from the Catacombs. This is our tabletop RPG adventure that we are thrilled to share with you. This game uses the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition D20 system and rules and the setting is a homebrew based off of the rock album Razia Shadow by Forgive Durden. We have a brief introduction to the setting that you can read at your leisure, and I hope you will, so you can be as immersed in the world as our players are. So without further ado, please enjoy this episode of Razia's Shadow, A Thousand Year Interlude. Let's recap. Session 13, Captain's Log. Novices explored Captain Nora's home to help them understand her worrying condition and why she had been left seemingly alone. Stayin's use of detect magic found Nora's enchanted locket her magic dagger, and her firearm, which was still at her side beneath the bed covers. Further exploration of the upstairs led them to the study and a large portrait of a couple on their wedding day. They determined the wife to be Captain Nora. They didn't know who the husband was. On a desk, they found books and notes about combat, histories of the world, and purgers. One specific note mentioned the turtle Tunnel Bennett, a famed purger captain involved in the massacre of Mossbridge. O spotted a lone page in a book with a tiny paragraph mentioning the fallen city of Gen, but it was vague in its information. Waiting for the novices downstairs was the guard on duty who finally introduced herself as Ziva. She sympathized with the group and thus didn't kick them out immediately, but she couldn't fill them in on much more. But they did confirm that the man in the portrait was Captain Elekin Asalin, captain of the guard and Nora's husband. As the novices left the rally district to put pieces together, they learned more about each other as well. Bo revealed his true age as just shy of 172 years old, and Stayin concluded that he had been at Gen when it fell, hence his deep knowledge of the incident. Snow revealed to Viola that he had to cancel his accidental date with fate because he was in love with another woman, though it was unrequited. Viola had similar bad luck with love, but she wasn't ready to share the details. Stayin gained strong insight as to what race she really is, a question sitting in the back of her mind for years. She concluded, she may be an Azamar, celestial likely touched by her goddess. It was how she determined this that was frightening. O offered to help requesting to taste some of her blood and revealing his true nature as a dampier. He asked if she would keep that between them for the time being. The novices reached the rising gate and they were immediately greeted by a familiar face, Guard Torval, but a message for Viola. The Avenger sent a request that he train her personally. You're not far from the entrance of the rising gate, the southern side of the Peace District. Uh, Torval handed this note to Viola, explained briefly what it was about. He takes a polite step back after handing it to her, and he continues. When your captain is able, have her sign off on this, and the Avenger will let you know as soon as he's ready to begin. I don't know when that might be more precisely. Captain Elekin was called back from an assignment just last night. Sounds like the Avenger is going to be put to task as soon as the captain gets back. I don't know any more than that yet. But he wanted to make sure his assignment request for you got moving. So here I am to deliver it. First off, I suppose I should just confirm with you. Do you accept the assignment? Oh, of course. 100%. Like, I am so excited for this opportunity. Perfect. And that makes this very easy. So thank you for that. Thank you for delivering this note, and I will try to get Captain Nora to sign it as soon as I'm able. Excellent. If that's all that, if that's all said and done. Using the mind link, I was going to message. Uh, Veal, is that is that jerk giving you problems again? Do we? Do you want us to come over? No, everything's fine. He's given me an invitation to train with Storkum. Are you sure it's not a trap? I don't know. I just have a note in my hand, and I haven't read it yet because it's all sealed up. Could be poisoned. <laughs> I'm okay right now. <laughs> you start talking to Bo using the mind link, and Torval had been saying some words 
uh, that you were maybe <laughs> half paying attention to because you were in your head, and you just hear him say, "You hear the you hear the name Sazian," and kind of brings you your attention back as he says, "I've made sure Sazian knows to prepare one of the finer carts for you to travel between the districts." I was told not to let you walk and tire yourself out before any of the training sessions, but that was my entire message. I need to be going. It was a pleasure to see you again, Lady Viola, on more jovial terms, perhaps. Thank you very much, and she'll turn and head back to the group. As he starts to leave, the coach coach house door opens, and you do see, leading a horse out, you see Sazian, in fact, in his black, buck-covered clothing, hunched over as he's gently guiding this horse out uh, in, a, in a smaller cart. And you see one of the guards from earlier. He's throwing a few things inside of that small cart and getting ready to get inside. Just as you hear Torval's voice again, you hear him call out, Panion! And the guy turns and looks at him. This is the same uh, man who has that kind of tanned skin and the curly black hair. He looks up and he kind of flinches a little bit as if he's expecting to be scolded maybe. And Torval continues, for the lady, she has somewhere to be. Just let it be, all right? And he looks between Torval, looks at Viola, looks back at Torval. I have a job. Ugh. Oh, I'm going to hear it. I'm going to hear it. And Torval just kind of laughs and nods again to Viola and makes his way further into the Peace District. Viola's going to make her way back to the group very excitedly, and she has the note in her hand. And I got invited to train with Storko. And then she's going to start opening her note. It should be available for you to see. It's up to you if you want to read it out loud or not. I can't tell if she's trying to read it out loud to us. Or... <laughs> no, I'm, re I'm, I'm reading it to myself. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's a mind link thing. <laughs> Is there a very long note, Viola? Kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost finished. I can't Get read and Let hear her read. words at the same time. I have to just like read in silence and like process what's being said. And then I can reiterate what it says to you. Uh, while I, she's um, while she's fair. reading over that, Sazian is assisting the slightly put out, you now know his name is Canyon, getting into the, the smaller kind of city cart, getting, making his way as if his shift were over. Okay. Uh, basically, it just says that Storkum's requesting an assignment for me to come and train in close quarters combat with him. And they're going to set a schedule for my training um, by communicating with Nora. And once the predetermined skill has been completed, then uh, Storkum is going to debrief, debrief with Nora. And how and, are they gonna do all of this with Nora exactly? Well, I have to get a signature from the agreeing party, which I'm guessing is Nora. So as soon as she comes to, which he said that uh, Storkum, Storkum might have to go because um, Captain Elekin just came back just got called back from an assignment i'm guessing because nora his wife right didn't we figure that out at her house that those two are something they're married yes that's, that's what something said. <laughs> <laughs> that is <your> something <laughs> um i'm guessing he's coming back to check on her and storkum's gonna have to leave probably because uh, Captain Elekin was called back. So I don't think this is going to be starting anytime soon anyway, so I'm probably going to have to wait until Nora's better to begin with. Huh. So his last name is Ian's. Am I saying that correctly? Yans. Yams. Yans? Yans. J-A-N-Z in common. J. Yans. I thought that was an I. It's a Yans. very fancy... He has, he has nice handwriting. He does oh, it's... have very <laughs> Stor... articulate handwriting. His last name is Yams? Yans. 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 All right. Can well, I do a history check to see if I know anything about that? If that's a family name I recognize or anything? Absolutely may. Well, that's or a five. I'm guessing I've never heard of it in my life. <laughs> You're more hopeful than anything else, but it does not read, ring a bell immediately. Just like, but maybe. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> While we're at the stables, does anybody mind if I run and check on Buttercup really quickly? 
I mean, yeah. it's fine. Well, how about this? Before you go check up on Buttercup, what are what are we planning to do from here? Are we thinking Thank go you. get some food and then? Oh, I will also say. Uh, Torval told the other guy, I can't remember his name, but it also started with a T, that I have a ride to and from this district to the other district whenever I want. He's supposed to let us through. So we've got like the golden ticket now. Ooh. Do you have any ride? That's going to be said so me, much easier. I'm assuming all of us um, we will just have to use some of that confidence we were talking about. Yeah, we're your entourage. Exactly. Yeah. We're not letting you go somewhere by yourself. We love you too much. But you can go yeah. to the stables by yourself. That's fine. Um, but <laughs> are we thinking? Are we thinking food then Saker's Keep then, or are we looking for Moonridge's house? What are we? What, what are we doing? Time is it? At this point, you're probably hitting close to midday, about about noon. You guys started pretty early. Oh, it's like midday meaning noon, or is that like something else? <laughs> I wasn't sure that meaning. <laughs> well, I don't know about food all y'all, but I didn't eat breakfast, so I would love some lunch. Yeah, that's. Probably a good idea. Maybe we can see um, if the one lady can Lear? make us. Lear can make Gosh. us. Gosh. <laughs> it's been a while since she's been around. <laughs> Your best we friend also, in the world. also uh, find some place to eat. What did that cost? Other than just trying money? to convince our friends to. Yeah, but we have money now. Well, we had money. <laughs> some of us just spent money. I have more money than I have had in a long time. <laughs> Does that mean you're treating it or? Sure. Yeah, I'll do All that. All right, well, if it's your treat, then we can go wherever you want. Well, I don't know what the options are, but Snow will just start walking in a direction. Oh, all... Wait, wait, wait. Looking for places to eat. Well, do we want her to go say Buttercup real quick? I just want to peek at her really quickly and say hello. And she'll communicate through Oh that? yeah, okay. we can, we can, as long as we're within a yeah. mile, we could just tell you when we find something. Okay, sounds like we a won't plan walk to that me. Fast. Just let me know where you guys end up going, and she will turn to head towards the stables. Yeah, there should be at least something else to eat around here, I assume. There are, yes. Okay, so so you guys start walking. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking for a fine um, establishment. <laughs> cool. You can definitely find that next to the dirty stables. Give me a perception check. <laughs> uh, s a snow stay in and. Oh, got nice seven. Forte. <laughs> That's to say 22. 12 and a 20. <laughs> We're starting strong. First roll of the night. You two must be ravenous. Well, oh, you must be ravenous. Snow, at the very least, is more mindful as you're walking. But stay in. You're more mindful than the others. Maybe because of that rejuvenation you had gotten earlier in the day after starting off completely and utterly exhausted. You start walking away from the stables and you pass by another one of the notice boards. So you you all notice there are a couple of what look like newly tacked up messages. Long written out notes. They look very official. They have like official stamps. Stay in. As you walk towards one to see what that might be, you also notice a very long uh, unfurled notice like more like a poster and you see on it it says wanted and you see the image of this armored <laughs> being it's not the best drawn but it's fairly detailed of a familiar looking <laughs> a familiar looking <laughs> armored person wanted armed and dangerous with that as you will <laughs> But the two notices you see, one, you see kind of underlined and bolded. The first, the first thing that pops out is the title uh, Harvest Lamps Festival. It's a short notice that looks like an invitation to a festival of sorts. The other one, the bolded words that you see on there says um, Ophidia's Unveiling Tour. This is a, a longer notice. Both of them have very official, official signatures on the bottom. The unveiling tour one has more official signatures on the bottom of it. Wait, so is it just stay in that's all the wanted poster and the rest of us are just seeing these other two posters? Is that what it was? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the other two are more important. That one was for fun for getting over 20. <laughs> stay will reach out to the wanted poster and pull it down, folding it and swiftly pocketing it. Yeah, sleight of hand check. Watch, she's gonna get better than what Bo ever got. <laughs> that <laughs> is a natural 20. 21 total. Okay. 
grab it, <laughs> yeah. hold it, pocket it while they are yeah. looking at another notice. So the Harvest Festival yeah, one reads, residents and visitors alike, you are cordially invited to celebrate the Harvest Lamps Festival in Gratimino. There will be festival games, unique food vendors, and goods for sale made by the people of our grand city. Enjoy featured entertainment and endless nights, all wrapped up with the reaping lights to pave the way into the season. Festivities begin on the eve of Harvest Vigil, which is in like two weeks now. Okay, two weeks. Cool. Yes. And then the second note says, King Marcorus of Yerusha and Queen Leila of Juventus are honored to welcome Yerusha's esteemed northern neighbors in celebration of Ophidia's unveiling tour. Liv sends her envoy with her royal highness princess anura for her rights of prestige and her rights of court in the final week of odona her royal caravan will rest in the city of gratimino before continuing the tour into vensalat you will be told the rules of conduct for when her highness is present in our city it will be your responsibility to maintain these rules as monitored by the Peace Watch and captains of the Guardian Residence. Let us use this joyous opportunity for all to reaffirm the union of the Kingdoms of Light. Then you see a number of signatures below. Rules of, of conduct. Wait, what day is at least? What day is this? Uh, uh, this one, ago. yes. The final week of Odona, which will be the next month. So Harvest Festival, Harvest Lambs Festival is at the end of this month. At the end of next month is when the unveiling tour will make its way through Grati Mino. Well, I say we stick around for the Harvest Festival. Well, come back for this Harvest Festival. But let's skip out on the other one. <laughs> Rules of conduct. You want to miss out on a very politically important event that likely be a, could be threatened, could be a challenge, could be an interesting time for better, us to gain points and merit. With better question. People. Do you want me to round a political heavy event? I trust you could conduct yourself appropriately. <laughs> well. If you wanted to. Exactly. Do we really want to attend that, though? <laughs> Sounds very Why don't you want stuffy to? Stuffy. And don't have the attire. Oh, but we could get the attire. That would be a lot of fun. Do they have a place in this area that sells... Oh, maybe maybe they'll give us free clothing for this. If we're expected we're to dress up. We're supposed to be up. getting, at some point, fancier attire from... Oh, her name is escaping me at this moment, but from that uh, dressmaker that we helped. Perolo? Oh, that's right. That was so long ago, I forgot. From that her was niece. the thing that happened. From her niece, yes. Muna. Perula Jade is the eccentric tabaxi aunt of Muna Swift, who is a famed okay, dressmaker in Zaley. All right, so you're saying you want to go get the clothing that was promised to us then. Well, we have time to both go to... Hazel Ford, come back here for the Harvest Festival, then go back up there before the end of the month. How long of a journey is it to get up to where it's being shipped to? Have we ever set up where it was getting shipped to? We could send a message to it and request it be sent here. How do we get the message to her in time? We try our best. Send a letter. They can't take that long. Exactly. You're the one with the shipping experience, aren't you, Beth? I mean, I know somebody that does shipping. I don't do it. Well, maybe you could ask her. (laughs) <laughs> I already have things that I need from her. Well, what's one more? <laughs> one more is probably more work on our end, which will take more time for it to get sent out. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think we have to make a decision on any of these things right now because they're not happening right now. So. Also, none of these things are restaurants. Where are we thinking to get food? Right. <laughs> <laughs> While you guys are about to go, once you leave the strict vicinity of, like, the lower area of the city you know for sure that there are little shops and such you know there's the wild pike of course but there's definitely other food vendors that are probably closer up towards the mercantile district which maybe you don't want to go too too far until we go over to viola (laughs) who has you went to go check on buttercup so sazian has finished helping canyon was his name to the other guard (laughs) helped him with his small uh, wagon and off he went he makes his way back into the uh, stable where you follow shortly behind him and you see a number of these you know a number of these little homes for the homes for the horses Uh, (laughs) they are it's actually fairly empty it looks like middle of the day people are probably out and about Um, but off to the side you do see the smaller (laughs) the smaller pen 
and curled up and kind of looking very comfortable and all up on herself is little buttercup gray uh, it looks like she's been brushed recently there isn't much there's only a little bit of straw clinging to her 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 fur her hair this is have hair her hair <laughs> and like she, as if uh, maybe sensing you or sensing someone approaching she kind of flops her head to the side you can see where some of the straw had stuck to the other side of her hair uh, and now upwards and she sees you <laughs> Viola will, as she passes Sazian, she'll say, hello, Sazian, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, If I'm not supposed to be in here, just let me know, but I just wanted to come and say hello to Buttercup and give her a little pet. And Viola will walk to the stall and kind of look at him to see if he's going to tell her she needs to leave or anything like that. He doesn't keep on verbally at all. He he just stands back in that normal kind of crouched over way that he stands he's just he watches you for a moment and then he just starts to slowly shuffle to the other side of the stable Viola will open the stall door and get in the stall with her and just start petting her maybe braid a few strands of hair into her mane and she's just gonna pet her for a while and if nothing else exciting happens before too long she'll get a hold of both through her mind yeah nothing Nothing too exciting. You do note, uh, give me a perception check. Dirty 20. While you were having this lovely time, this moment, getting reacquainted with Buttercup, Sazian was not doing any particular task. He just kind of seemed like he was waiting for you. You're the only one, the only other one in there. So he would, you kind of noticed him looking down towards you for a moment as if checking in. And then towards the door, which was still open, and then back down. Then he kept looking back up towards the door, as if maybe waiting for something. But he doesn't say anything to you. So whenever whenever you should decide to leave, uh, you would be welcome to. He doesn't say anything else. Uh, Sazian, is Buttercup going out on any more missions or getting any jobs anytime soon? So you kind of jump a little bit as if he was surprised that you had addressed him. He just shakes his head. Okay, well... Please take good care of her for me. I'm sure I'll be back a few times to visit. And then she'll get up to leave and open the door to the stall and close it behind her. And she'll kind of stand in front of him and look at him and just say, I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, and I hope I didn't disrupt anything. And then she'll turn to go. Okay. And that entire time, he never actually made eye contact with you. He never looked kind of higher than about probably just your beast but he nodded in acknowledgement when you spoke to him then off hey bo where are you at um where are we at now (laughs) did you decide you wanted to go to one of the smaller events there's there's all manner of places you could go it's not like incredibly crowded but you might pass there's like a sandwich shop there's a a a meat stand i was left in snow's decision so do we want the vendor or do we want the wild pike? Well, if we go to the wild pike, isn't that where it's like the free food that we were going to go to? Or maybe Well, I mean it's a no, I mean it's a tavern, so we can buy food there. Oh, where's the place that the food is free? If it's not I thought the wild pike was There's a mess hall further back in the mess in the wild pike, oh, isn't there? But it's separate. It's in the ah. office hut. It's confusing because this place is enormous. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we could go to the Wild Pike where we already know some people or we can find a new vendor. Well, we... I mean, I'm fine with you deciding, but either I'm just going to start walking the me. direction I saw you guys go unless you tell me a different way to go, okay? <laughs> Sorry, we're so still start... trying to figure out where we're going. Tell Viola that we haven't gone very far at all. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're just like standing in the street yeah we <laughs> kind like of got stopped by a stand <laughs> and that's about as far as we got Viola just keep just walking until she sees board. them it doesn't take long you guys can reconnect as you uh, head get closer to the mercantile district alright how about we just decide which one's going to be the fastest so that way we can get on to our other goals for the day well if we take a little bit of time I can actually finish attuning to this that would be good and that takes an hour. An hour. So we can take an hour for lunch. Which are we taking that? If we go to the Wild Pike, then we can 
Bo, after lunch, while he's attuning, we can go look at that ledger. Oh, look at you remembering things. Oh, I'm going to remember things. The wild pike. <laughs> One word. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> You make your way back up to the mercantile, the mercantile district, passing those shops and stands into the Wild Pike itself, and it is flush with people. Uh, it's a brilliant, busy lunch hour. You see numerous bar maids and bar lads that you have not become familiar with <laughs> uh, as they're moving about from table to table. People are laughing and joyful, uh, uh, talking loudly just to hear over the other conversations. You find it difficult to find a table, but there's, you know, you, you might be able to find a little something. It's very crowded though, even up at the bar area of which there are the two sides, it is still quite crowded. And you even hear, it seems like someone may be taking advantage of the crowd and in the center, you see someone up there playing this fun, but gentle, liar. She's sitting on a small stool as she just leans over and every now and then she's brushing curls of purple out of her hair uh, as she goes back and she's strumming about on this lyre to the uh, to everyone's entertainment. But it's very crowded. Looking for a the place to sit. The real question is do I see the polar bear? Give me perception check. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It came and gone. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> try as you might, you do not see a polar bear in here. A lot of interesting people. The polar bear, polar bear is right behind Viola the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like in one of those tap the shoulders. She looks, and he's on this side. <laughs> <laughs> you do not see the polar bear. I should say. Let me specify. You do not see the polar bear. <laughs> Since it's crowded, as we're finding a table. Bo is going to just try and pickpocket somebody as they walk by. No one specific, just... <laughs> huh? Last time it was no one specific. Got screeched at. <laughs> well, he talked his way out of that. So far, that's one of the most successful things, that when someone was drunk. So, actually, is anyone drunk? <laughs> give me a... Give me a um, let's do an insight check, because it's right. fun. And it's not a perception check. Ooh, 21. Ooh. So you guys are moving about looking for anyone freeing up space or whatever it is. And you do see one table. You see, <laughs> you see a few watchmen who are uh, maybe on their own lunch break, a group of gentlemen, and they appear to be drinking to their satisfaction. Maybe a little slumped on their chairs or uh, unstable, leaning forward on the table, talking loudly amongst each other, laughing, and they don't appear to be wholly sober. All right, so one of them, he's going to attempt mm -hmm. a pickpocket. You're going to attempt a pickpocket on one of them. Yeah, so first it's a 13 <laughs> plus... <laughs> plus six. So that'll be a 19 if you want me to use that die. There you go. Scratch off the die. Um, okay, you. So tell me, tell me what this looks like while you. Do your thing. So I mean, if they're just sitting there drunk, he's just gonna go by, and if he, I don't know if they have like a pocket or if he could see like a pouch by them, but he'll just kind of side grab it as he goes, and then just kind of have it in his hand after that. So just kind of like as he's going by and grab. And grab. Are you taking the whole pouch? If they have a pouch, he'll just take the pouch. If they, okay. um, if he's going in someone's pocket, it's just whoever he grabs. Yeah, you find a you find a small pouch. It's not very heavy, so you find the small, brown, sort of suedeish pouch. Very smooth movements. One, two, three, and it's off of his uh, belt loop. All right, and then he'll just continue on his way. Excellent. <laughs> now have a small suede pouch <laughs> that feels like you've got something in it good for you <laughs> looks like y'all would like to find a place to sit Bo, uh snow is going to take off his backpack and retrieve his vial from it and just hand it to stan and <laughs> i will be right back find us a seat 
and he's gonna go over to the individual playing the liar. Give me a, a straight intelligence check. 18 intelligence. Perfect. You actually recognize her as the woman who was in the Wild Pike in the wee hours of this morning as well. And she's up there strumming along. She doesn't recognize you. In fact, she doesn't notice you as you walk up immediately uh, until you're close enough to what you now see is a small a small bowl with some copper pieces in it. Once you're close enough to the tip jar uh, is when she thinks to look up and sees you. Uh, and she just smiles as she continues to play. Maybe gives this a little like, ah, happy nod towards the tip jar and then keeps playing. Snow is going to take a couple copper and drop it in the tip jar. But then he's going to start harmonizing with whatever she's playing on his vial. Oh, lovely. Okay, give me a performance check. Do I have advantage from anything? <laughs> <laughs> this is literally what he does, but that is an eight. Oh no! <laughs> that was very oh, okay. sleight of hand initial. It was, <laughs> was an eight. <laughs> it was a natural two, oh, <laughs> up to an eight because he's so good at it. You know, it's possible that you're a little bit thrown still from the conversation you had with Viola earlier about the situation with fate. Maybe it's just yeah, you instinctually wanted to go up and start playing and maybe uh, fingers are a little shaky but you start playing along with her the notes you can hear don't quite hit she doesn't stop she doesn't laugh or anything she just keeps playing you think maybe she even starts playing a little bit louder as if to cover any of the mistakes of which there were more than you would have hoped <laughs> but when the song comes to an end you hear this uproar of applause coming from the coming from the tables of those who are sober enough to find their hands. And <laughs> before she starts playing again, she looks over to you. She says, you can try again if you'd like. Apologies, I seem to not be at my best today. Or maybe my best is, just doesn't compare to yours. It happens. If you're classically trained, then you tend to play pretty well. Are you? I am. Nice to meet you. I'm Vav. I am Snow. Uh, he'll shake her hand. Well, if I am not getting in the way, I would love to do one more song with you before I get back to my friends. Sure. If you need me to play a little louder, <laughs> just let me know. And she um, she looks around, she realizes there isn't another stool, and she stands to offer you hers if you'd like it. Oh no, I, I usually play standing up when I, when I play my bio. All right. And she says, tell me if you know this one. And she makes herself comfortable again, and as the crowd is dying down, she'll start playing another tune. This one is a lot slower, calmer than the first, and immediately kind of it's a whole different feel to the entire uh, the entire tavern. The uh, conversation dies down just a little bit. Uh, everyone seems to calm just a little bit. You c give me another performance check. Don't fail me again. <laughs> well, it's better. <laughs> It's in the double digits, at but least. not by much. <laughs> Eleven. It beat a ten! Yay! <laughs> so she starts playing this tune, and it's vaguely familiar to you. But you probably know it as far as like you know when you're first learning your chords, and so you're learning just the very basics of each individual note. So you can kind of play it like hot cross bun style while she's doing all of the uh, fantastic individual groupings of chords. So hers just sounds richer than yours does, but yours does not conflict with hers. Yours is like play school, plays cool version of her orchestral version of this tune. But <laughs> it sounds lovely and a few people do come by and drop some more copper in the, in the little jar, in the little bowl as you two play say while he plays he's also going to cast minor illusion so there is visual effect of like uh, butterflies like drifting around them and like leaves floating through the air just like very softly before they just scatter into sparkles at the ground that gets uh, a, a big applause that special effect even she looks over at you as she's playing uh, she doesn't miss a beat but she looks at you for a moment and kind of nods as she keeps going, as if she were very impressed, while you two... It's something I don't have to roll for. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Yay, magic! It makes things easy! <laughs> we don't have to try! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's clearly not the case. <laughs> While you two are playing, you've met Vov, lovely lady. You guys, the other three, Thayan, Bo, and Viola, it is, it is still tricky to find proper tables, but there are actually along the walls, there's also like stadium seating, like bleacher seating, that there's space there if you guys wanted to just sit there instead. You could find spot for four of you. That's what's available, that's what we'll do. Maybe okay. we can convince other people to move to the bleachers. Then we could take their seat. We're planning to be here for a little while. I'm sure if we sit and wait for the lunch rush to die down, we can claim a table in a few minutes. It's not like we have our food yet, anyways. Like sure, but are they going to see us to take an order if we're sitting over there? And almost immediately as the thought crosses your mind, one of the bar lads is immediately zooming in your direction. He has this apron covering these bunched trousers and a kind of off-white top. He comes over to you, this tall gentleman, and he uh, nods his head, looks at you all. Did, uh, did you have a chance to see what we had? Did you have something in mind you wanted? What can I get for you? Do you have a menu? Oh, yeah, of course. And he pulls out this, this a scroll from his pocket and with a lap, like with a flourish, opens it for you to see. There's a few different items on there. There's uh, some stew, some, some charred fish. So I'm going to imagine this is happening just as Snow starts playing on his end because Bo's going to mind message to him asking him what he wants. <laughs> uh, Snow. I have an actual menu here too that I literally found on like a generator. So there's there's stewed puma. There's charred hackleware. Oh, jackal. It's a jackal. <laughs> it looks like a tea. <laughs> There's pureed onions. There's aardvark kidneys. It's not a meal. <laughs> pureed onions is not a meal. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Look, we love you. We just don't know what you eat. Not even a side. Um, there's brisket. <laughs> there's stewed chili peppers. And then there's an assortment of beers, wines, liquors. But you already know. You've seen the selection that they have uh, behind the bar. So what do you want to eat? Just pick something. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where the eight came from. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I was saying. <laughs> In the background, he just hears. <laughs> 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 uh, All right, Snow said to just pick him something. So what about the pureed onions? <laughs> I'm gonna nix that for him. Let's yeah. do. Yeah. Let's do <laughs> one of the stews. Um, the first stew or whatever. Everyone wants that, or did you want something else? The, the stewed, a uh, stewed puma. It's gonna be uh, seven silver pieces. It's the only one kind of stew, or is there like other ones? There's stewed chili peppers. I'll take the, the cheapest puma. thing on the menu. <laughs> yeah, what? Silver pieces. <laughs> Wait, how? What is the cheapest thing? But it's the well, onion puree. Well, if you're still looking for some, if you're looking for some, uh, <laughs> still something with a little more substance, some good proteins, uh, the brisket. That's three silver pieces. We'll do the briskets. Yeah, four orders oh, of brisket. brisket. Oh, and ale. Snow would probably ale, want to drink. Wonderful. Yeah, ale all around. Mm -hmm. Sure, why not? Wonderful, ale all around. Excellent. I'll be right back. Thank you, and bar you lad. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even. He just tips his uh, he tips his head to you, and uh, this beautiful quaff just kind of flips for a moment and flips back, and uh, he he goes. As you guys are listening to the players, <laughs> the first song wasn't so wasn't so great, but it really picks up on that second song. <laughs> well, as they approach the bench, but it's gonna be a little bit behind them, and he's gonna look and see what's in that pouch they pickpocketed. Sure, you got yourself five more gold pieces and six more silver pieces. Nice, making his money back. <laughs> One pocket at a time. <laughs> That's more than I make in half a week. <laughs> I just have to steal. <laughs> He's up to eight gold now. <laughs> After spending it all yeah. <laughs> just earlier that day. Catacombs. We, uh, we're teaching really great moral lessons. All right, so he's going to tune to his necklace. Viola, what are you doing during this hour? You know, I don't really have any plans. I need to find someone to sign my note. I'm guessing Nora has to sign it, but I'm kind of wondering if Moonridge would be able to sign it. But didn't we want to talk to him anyways? Yeah, well, if we can figure out where he is. Right now, I feel like Aglin is probably our best starting spot since we know where he is. 
True, but we also know they should be at what they have an office somewhere or something. Mm-hmm. That's my we go where Vaughn and Moonridge are, and we want to talk to both of them. We just don't want to go far, I guess, so we're not leaving snow in the dust when he's becoming friends with his little necklace. Uh, Joseph now is going I to think? go by quickly. Yeah, he called You'd it. You'd be Joseph. surprised if you have nothing to do; it can go by very, very slowly. The um, the bar lad makes his way back in maybe twenty minutes or so, uh, as the food was finished being prepared, and he starts. He lays down in front of Viola, and stay in Snow. Would you have joined them in this time, or are you continuing to play? Wait, is he laying it down on the bleachers, or do we find a He's... table since then? No, he's a table has not opened. <laughs> it's very busy. He he hands it to you or you know places it in an available spot depending on if you accept it or not. He does warn you the plate's a little hot. It's a little. He apologizes for the inconvenience in front of Viola, in front of Stayin, uh, and he mentions so it would be what is that three silver and four copper between the ale and the brisket. Snow, did you join them? When that song ends, Snow is going to drop a silver piece in her hat bowl, and then he'll go over and join his friend. She thanks you tremendously, and she says, this will be helpful when, uh, once my boyfriend finally proposes to me, but that's still coming. She kind of half-jokingly rolls her eyes, <laughs> and then she keeps playing. Well, in that case, he'll pull out another silver and drop that in there, too. <laughs> Thank you! Oh, that'll definitely raise the carrot. <laughs> Tell him to get a move on, oh, and then trying. Snow will go find the rest of the others. All right, you get back in time um, to have been seated as the bar lad returns and puts the plate down in front of you as well. Again, it's three silver pieces, four copper. And as he as he stands no, we'll hand that over. and as he stands before you, Bo, he says, "That's going to be ten gold, three silver pieces, and four copper, please." Well, Snow is covering it. Oh, I'm sorry. This was very specific. Well, the deal was we're eating here with him having paying for it. Oh, that is a shame. This is a really well-made brisket. Oh! He reaches over he and grabs the brisket. <laughs> Give me a dex check. <laughs> Six. <laughs> just, he's like, well, but he does this like, very lavish spin as if he's very well trained in this and your hands go well below it as he turns <laughs> about and head back towards the bar area and one of the doors back there. What was that about? Uh, what? What just happened? I don't know. <laughs> Why did he ask you for gold? We didn't have to pay any gold. I don't know. Do you I was actually going to not follow know? Him. I well, don't uh, know. We didn't talk about it. Can I insight check? May and Snow, are you attempting to stealth behind this guy? No, he's just following. He's, okay. he's just going to catch up with him. That's a 20 on my insight check. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Do you want to he read I mean, Bo's up? mind? I mean, Bo, to his knowledge, he doesn't really see any reason why he's getting charged that. Bo seems very confused, <laughs> apparently. Interesting. Uh, although the incident from that early wee hours of this morning does pop into mind briefly. Snow, <laughs> you follow behind this bar lad as he heads back around the bar. You see him give a nod to, you now see Rosita's back there uh, speaking to some of the other patrons you see him make a quick whistle and she looks over at him and he nods and so she nods and then she goes back to attending to patrons at the bar as he goes into the what you can see as he pushes the door open is a kitchen so now we'll go over to rosita from the patron side of the bar stand the bar table <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't okay. he doesn't jump the bar <laughs> <laughs> um, he'll, he'll stay on his side Okay. You can kind of, it's very crowded, but you can kind of shimmy your way through. You're not, you, you, you are a svelte gentleman. <laughs> I don't take up much space. <laughs> not much. Rosita, hello. How are you? Oh, hello, Snow. Welcome, welcome. Sorry, it's a little busy. It's a little loud. Do you need anything? I was just wondering if perhaps you knew why uh, my friend was getting charged so much more than the rest of us and just had his brisket taken back into the kitchen. You see her uh, looking, like she raises her eyebrows as if she doesn't quite know what you mean. And she leans over and she looks over just precisely where your friends are. Like she didn't look, she just <laughs> looks directly where they are uh, and says, oh, everyone's here, how lovely. Oh, I don't know. Uh, perhaps it's uh, an overdue tab that needs to be paid. All right, well. Uh, I told him I was treating, so how much is it? Oh, no, 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 Snow, we couldn't. You, you're fine, no, please. 
Well, if it is an overdue tab, uh, that's just business, so I can. Unless it's a personal matter? Um, it is... you could say that. <laughs> there was, um, there was an incident, perhaps, uh, last night, and there may or may not be an amount of ten gold or so missing from one's person, and simply needs to be paid back. Maybe an apology or two is probably worthwhile. Perhaps. I see. But it's nothing you need concern yourself with, Snow. You are a gentleman among gentlemen. A gentleman among knaves, perhaps. It's very kind of you. In that case, I shall simply continue to prove your point by... And he's going to take out ten gold and place it down on the counter. <laughs> Snow, you really shouldn't. It's only money. Well, for you, for him maybe, but... Not for the person it was stolen from. Well, then this should cover it. In the meantime, uh, myself and my friends would like to eat lunch. <laughs> so if this would smooth it over, then I consider it worth it. It won't, but she's like gathering the gold. But I won't keep you waiting, I suppose. You should tell him. Thank you, Rosita. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sweet boy. But tell him that if he does anything like that again, we won't care who's right and who's wrong, he won't be welcome back here. We don't need that kind of a ruckus in our establishment. She'll take the gold and she'll peek her head into the kitchen and snap her fingers. And just as jovial as before, the bar lad comes back out and he's kind of like zipping through everyone and smiling and he comes back and he places the uh, eight in front of Bo. And he says, that'll be three copper and four... Oh, sorry, three silver and four copper pieces. Wasn't that just paid for? No. What is it? Three silver, four copper. Stan will pull the money out of her bag and hand it over for Oh, him. I mean, he was about to. I don't know if Snow to. went back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, is Snow back with that? If he sees that the that Bo's lunch is actually being given to him, then, then Snow will give Rosita a smile. I hope the rest of your day is not too hectic. And I do apologize for any inconvenience. You are a good man. No. And she reaches her hand out. One of her jeweled hands has a number of these metal rings on it. And she puts her hand on yours, Snow. Um, and she says very... Her, her demeanor changes. It's very, very solemn for a moment. And she says, do not let people take advantage of that. And she'll pat your hand, and she'll smile again, nod at you, and she'll go back to tending to the patrons. So we'll go back to the others. Okay, food has been served. You guys enjoy a delicious, dang near perfectly cooked brisket, as uh, Snow is also attuning. Wait, so what was the deal with all that, Snow? Uh, there was a bit of an issue, because apparently they know that you stole from them, uh, or from somebody. I'm a little fuzzy on the details. Um, Oh. 10 gold um yeah i kind of yelled at the barkeeper this you... morning that's right that, that may have happened that probably wasn't <laughs> yeah that probably wasn't your best move um she did say to let you know that if you continue to cause a ruckus uh you will be banned from the wild pike and there's only so much i can talk them out of so <laughs> okay so as of right that. now if i do something like that then i could get banned Correct. Have you already yes. done something uh, like that since the so. last night or this morning time we're talking about? Are we talking about <laughs> taking someone's money or throwing dust in their eyes? Uh, oh. I think anything uh, that could be considered the least bit offensive while inside the wild pike. Oh, well, I so, called that person a bar lad. Is that offensive? I honestly don't know. I've never heard the term before. <laughs> <laughs> it he feels a little demeaning, it. but he didn't seem to care, so I don't know. <laughs> well, seems then. happy enough. Well, then I think I think we're good. Are you sure? Just yeah, just don't just don't do anything. We'll be fine. Yeah, as right now. Insight well, twenty insight still working for me. <laughs> <laughs> Best behavior while in the wild pike. <laughs> were you doing an insight check? Either of you two? I'd like to do an insight check. Okay. <laughs> You're always welcome to do an insight check. I don't say no to those. They're just too good. Cool. Well, I got a nat 20. What are we insight checking? Woo! 
<laughs> so <laughs> that's twenty or better. Well, not twenty done. plus seven, so it'd be it had to be a twenty-seven. It's at least gonna well, start. <laughs> that gets me. Yeah, it's a twenty-seven. Not a nat twenty, but a twenty-seven. But it's Dang. not a nat twenty. <laughs> I gotta give it to the nat 20. That's so good. <laughs> oh, I didn't even have to whip out a psionic die. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even ask me if he had to mark it. So you take this time, unless there's something specific you guys Wait, want to so do. Wait, so do you pay them coffee? 10? So, is that, is that? Yes. Well, I don't have 10 on me, but I can give you what I have. Don't worry about it. Are you sure? I mean, if you want to pay me, you can, but <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> Well, how about this? But... I'll give you the gold pieces that I got, if that... That's six. All right. Thank you. Snow, how much gold do you have total? <laughs> total, 42. Cool. Okay. <laughs> then stay and still has Snow's um... backpack. She's going to tuck another four gold pieces into it um, while this conversation is happening. <laughs> Why uh, are you guys so nice? Snow... <laughs> <laughs> Snow does want his backpack back and he puts his vial back inside it. He'll pass it over after it. she has the money. When you when you pass it over, uh, he will tell you thank you in Celestial. She understands and she responds <laughs> in the same and is surprised at that. What was what that? Guys saying? I was just telling you thank you. I understood but it wasn't normal. I know you did. No. Well, maybe you're not normal and maybe that's a good thing. Determined I'm not normal. To be fair, I don't think any of us are normal. But didn't you describe yourself There's as no a normie fun. just earlier? Well, my race is normal, <laughs> but Viola Vergarden <laughs> is nothing but normal. She is magnificent. Thank you very much. Hmm. Exactly. Get it, girl. Go off, queen. You're and that's because of the family that you came <laughs> from, which is known for what? Things. Ah, so you are known for something. Potentially. Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> that Wait, one. <laughs> Maybe. Um, <yeah. laughs> what did you get? I beat that. I got a 10 with my modifier. <laughs> it was awful at telling secrets. I rolled a 12, also. so... <laughs> Oh yeah, do you have a minus Oh, uh, her charisma is baloney, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yup, so you guys take your time, you're enjoying your lunch. No spends the next hour attuning. Well, I think Excellent. we were going to go look at the thing. In the... At the ledger, yes. You guys head back up. Give me another perception check as you head back up. Are you all going, or are you guys doing this while Snow is taking his we time? We were doing this while he... I mean, Where Viola could Snow? come if she wanted, but... That's what I was going to say. Is Snow staying in the Wild Pike, or is he heading back to, like, the quarters? I'm focusing. <laughs> so I'm not she'll, going she'll hang around by him in the Wild Pike so that he's not by himself. Boga an 8 yeah. for that perception check. He said perception, that's a 27. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> an 8 and a 27. <laughs> Bo, you are... um. Maybe you're not super thrilled that you have to that you made this bargain, but there really wasn't a way around it because you really want to look at that diary. Like you are super interested in the diary, so you are beelining it for your barracks. You're not focused on anything else. Stay in. You're taking a nice, easy, breezy stroll, and you see when you get upstairs, the notice boards. There are two of them. And on one of them, you find another one of these wanted posters. <laughs> you will take that one as well and tuck it in her pocket. You're starting to suspect. It might be around. <laughs> what did you roll, 22? 27. None, that was a 27. If you add 27. guidance, it's 30. 30. <laughs> yeah, you're starting to suspect that if you pass by any notice board, you're going to find one of these things. Oh, but God, the... what, what was that? Matter. Talking to herself, commenting to herself. But you should see the ledger available to you now. This is all that's in there. What does it mean? It's a ledger. I I am not entirely sure on everything that's going on either. Like, like I mean, I don't do the shipping. I just know somebody that does it, like I was saying earlier. So best I can make out is you have the name or business 
and then the person that's doing whatever it is and their location then some kind of status or something and then it's going someplace i don't know something something like that so there's a couple of names on here including that lady that we helped out her name was like parolo jade isn't it parola jade yes yeah so there's a p jade on here and looks like it's connected to zaley which i think that's where her that's where her niece is yeah so we know that there's trade happening there interesting do you recognize oh, any names i'll let you both roll a just straight up intelligence i'll let you, well i'll let you roll a history check though as you have familiarity with the owner of said ledger saying i'll allow you to roll an intelligence check i got a seven <laughs> oh <laughs> that's, that's, that's a 16 that nat 20 is gonna be the only thing out of him in this session <laughs> <laughs> to avoid lying oh and avoid i guess i guess lying? stealing and stealing <laughs> ah wonderful 16 it seems to follow that essentially it's a starting location uh, whether it's a business or and or the owner, the proprietor, it seems to follow the essentially the shipment route. Whether that's direct to wherever it's going, it might stop at a custom station potentially if it's traveling between kingdoms, <laughs> and then it has a final destination. Which again, that might be the business and or the proprietor it might be a sole entity, a single person. And then the cost. It seems to track. That it could looks like be a, a cost for cost. the. Yeah, it could be the cost of the item itself. It could be the cost of business to ship it. That part, you're not entirely sure. And it's going to take a minute to read over it as I take a second to read over it. And look at the sure. Viola, wasn't there something you needed in the barracks area as well? She was going to show Snow the blood, but she can't do that while he's attuning. I mean, she could still go get it. <laughs> Bring it down to the... I just want to make sure it wasn't forgotten while someone happens to be up here, because... The DM will forget, and then we'll have to go another two weeks. Well, we remember. This stuff is. Yeah. Oh, it's on the note. <laughs> she might eventually think about it and, like, kind of perk up and, like, look at Snow and, like, realize that he's just sitting there doing whatever he's doing. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll... No, he's just humming up... to himself. <laughs> she'll run up to the barracks and go to her room to grab that water skin of blood head upstairs uh look it appears that the barracks is currently empty so not anyone you particularly have to hide it from you can grab it put it in your pack when she's getting it she will very carefully like pick up the water her water skin put it down pick up the water skin <laughs> of blood and then put it where her original <laughs> water skin was before putting it back she will un like open it again check and see if there's still <laughs> blood in it close it and then Put it away. So you, you've opened it to see if there was blood in it? Just yeah. Just to make sure? Yeah. Okay. Disgustingly enough, yes. It is, it is still in there. And it's still not crusty? It is not crusty. So then she'll start to make her way back down to the Wild Pike. She will peek at her mailbox as well to see if it's glowing or not. Nope. Not currently. Because you already got your handbook and your mm -hmm. payment. Excellent. Yeah. But Stayins is still glowing unless Stayin grabbed that earlier too. <laughs> Are they no, in the common yet. area? Stayin would have to be at least because she would. I mean, unless Bo brought her into the men's. Yeah, that's where barrack. he was taking her. She's oh, just gonna... he took her into the men's barracks. Yeah, there was no rule against ah, it, as far as he's yeah, concerned. As far as he's concerned. Stayin doesn't know the rules. Stayin Bo has read his rule book. <laughs> he skimmed Bo it for threw it. it on the floor. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you uh, you took you took staying into the men's barracks. You already said the barracks are empty. <laughs> I said the women's Every... barracks were empty. Yeah, I didn't know that. Everyone's at lunch. <laughs> I'll let y'all do a perception check on your way out. Well, are we? Well, have you read through it? Yeah, Stan's gonna point at one of the names. That's my last name. Oh. And she points at the. A elite vine there. Does she recognize the first initial? Almost certainly. Wait, you're That's saying the standard family trade. Good to know. <laughs> You've learned something about your character today. <laughs> Wait, so you recognize the last name, you don't recognize the first name? Is that what you're saying? Do I know the oh, full she, name? You would recognize yeah, you know what that stands for. Whether it be, I, you, you know, let's let's say it, it's that's a parent's name, father's name. Cool. Yeah, that's my father. What's his first name? A. It's been years since I've even thought about the man. I don't remember that. 
I mean, you're not that old. <laughs> no, but there are things I'd like to forget. Okay, that's that's fair. All right, so he's in the ore company? Is he like a miner? Something like that. Is it concerning his name showing up on here? I just wasn't expecting to see it. Haven't seen his name anywhere in almost a decade. How far away is Ustrum? If he's there. How far away is Ustrum? Ustrum is way up near Zaley. It's the small, well, it's, it's one of the smaller farming towns, but it is also very close to the Scarred Mountains. To the east, there's also ore trade, there's quarry, there's things like that as well. Ustrum's up closer to Zaley by the Scarred Mountains, quite a, it's not very close. Ah, okay, well, is that a place you'll be wanting to go? Be like, I know what I am now, in your face. No, that chapter of my life is closed. Oh, actually, speaking of what you are, what kind of wings do you think you're gonna get? Wings? Well, Asmar sprout rings at certain points for a short duration. That's part of that. Yeah, it kind of comes with the with the package deal kind of thing. There was one instance, just thinking back, a few months ago, I was in a tight spot, needed a quick way out. I asked Atala for aid, and next thing I knew I was flying. Hasn't happened since then. Ah. <laughs> Maybe you just need to think of a happy thought. <laughs> You know, to do it on command without needing outside help. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe that's it. How long were you able to fly for? Long enough to get away. I wasn't paying attention to time. What was it like? Terrifying. Oh, I would think it would be exhilarating. Though I guess Perhaps. you were—I guess you were running away from people. Maybe they were shooting arrows at you. It was a—it uh, was not a pleasant situation. I couldn't tell you if it was exhilarating or not because. I was just hoping my death hadn't been earned yet. Oh, you know what, though? You're going to really show up Viola the next time we have to climb a wall. <laughs> <laughs> you don't so. need no leaping necklace or whatever she was trying to give you in that shop. All right, maybe if I can just think of happy thoughts, it'll work. Well, I mean, something. I mean, it's a running theory. I mean, I don't know. We could, we could do some, we could do some training regiments. Like we can, well, then you would have to climb up, so that could be an issue if you were gonna jump off of a place to have them sprout. But do, we can. Do you want me to jump off a building or something and see gotta, if I have to sprout wings to catch me before? Well, we I gotta fall start the small, so maybe like a cliff that's overhanging like a pond or a lake, so that way if it doesn't happen, something that we. Stan's gonna look at her heavy armor. Look at Bo. Well, you'll have to take off the armor, Stan. No. Well, just for the training purposes. When was the last no. time you took off the armor? You know there's upkeep that needs to be done on that. I take care <laughs> of myself and my armor. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, I'm just saying. At some point, you must take it off. I take it off when I need to. Yeah. When it's so, safe to do so. This place hasn't proven safe enough for that. Well, this place also doesn't seem to have a lake. So we'd have to go someplace with a lake. Unless you wanted to jump into hay. That can make a good bed. I I think I need to talk to Atala before I do any of this. That's up to mm. you. But I was just curious. But hey, now you even know more. You can, you can, you're a flying kind of Azamar. So that's, that's nifty. Sure. And, you know, family business might be booming or something, even if you don't care <laughs> about them. So, I mean, you could just... It's not that I don't care about them. Just, when's the last time you saw your family? Longer than you've been alive? Right, but relatively speaking. About a century? Do you miss them? Well, yeah. So why haven't you seen them? I've been busy searching out things about that happen again. I mean, that's part of the information that we have from... But for a whole century, you couldn't find a weekend to see your family. I mean, it's not like Fendella's nearby. But you seem to get around pretty well. Yeah, but I've never been... I've never had much need to go up that far. Your family's not enough of a need to go that far. I mean, not away from what I need to do. Are you scared to go back to them? Why would I be scared? You seem uneasy. Well, that doesn't mean I'm scared. No, doesn't mean you're not scared. All right, well, I'm not scared, but okay. there's concerns, I guess you can say. There's that. Do those concerns have anything to do with our little exchange in the woods? 
yes, not exactly welcomed in that whole entire area. At least if I was found out anyway, it would go pretty bad. I hope one day you can see them again then. We will see. I am trying to figure out what's going on, but for the meantime, I just figured it would be best to not just- Have you written to them? Well, no, basically, since the whole entire place went down, I figured they probably think I'm dead. So if I wrote to them, then I would explain why I'm not coming back. So I've just been letting that kind of go off as me being dead. That's tragic. Eventually, maybe I'll be able to tell them. And in the meantime, they've had over a century now to be over it. So that's very much and very little time for y'all, isn't it? Exactly. I think... If anything, all I have is somewhat welcome news as long as they don't ask too many questions. All right. So we should probably get back to the others. Yeah, we can go ahead. Hey, you guys make your way back down. Give me a perception check on your way out. Is there another wanted poster since we walked by? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's just no, trailing behind me. Anyway. to the men's barracks. <laughs> hey, I got an eight again. <laughs> that is a 24. I've got an eight, a seven, and an eight. My last three rolls. It's a good day for Bo. Great day <laughs> for Bo. Yeah, Bo is maybe maybe I don't want to assume, but Bo, you <laughs> you make your way out of the barracks, stay in as you're heading out. Behind you, you hear a door open and a head peek out. You see one of the one of the men in the barracks. He looks humanoid. Just kind of pokes his head out for a second, sees you, kind of sees. Maybe just the pure height and the armor. Pulls his head right back in and you hear the door close. <laughs> <laughs> As you make your way out. That brings you guys back down to the Wild Pike. Probably enough time's gone by. Snow is attuned to Joseph. Bo's gonna the remind of Snow. The oh, and Bo's gonna remind Stan to check our mailbox. Oh, ah, mailbox. Check mailbox. In your mailbox, you find a lovely little brown pouch with a nice little embroidery on it. <laughs> Yeah, he was mainly concerned uh, about her getting a talk. paycheck, not getting the book. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and that was the very first Take thing she book. found. And underneath it, you find what reads, novice handbook or novice guide. <laughs> Here it is. She finally has it. <laughs> Catherine's had that for like a month now, and she's highlighted it. It has so many highlights and notes. Wait, what does she do with the book when she gets it? She looks at it, starts flipping through it as she's walking. But it's going to be keeping an eye out for when she puts it in her pack. <laughs> I'll probably be when they get back down. Sure, Bo. I'll let you keep an eye out. Uh, if you we'll roll well on perception. A lot. <laughs> Stan, let me know when you're done with the with the reading. <laughs> we broke this what? rule and this rule and this rule. That's why he's trying to help bypass. <laughs> Let's make some havoc. He doesn't Let's know do the rules, but he pipe. assumes they've broken them. <laughs> well, for sure. For sure, for sure. Maybe just a um, couple. So you guys reconnect at the Wild Pike. It has now started to clear out towards the end of this kind of lunch rush, it seems. Where are you guys going? Uh, Did you know there was a handbook for this place? Well, oh, yeah. I think oh, it's more... Yes, and pull hers that. out of her waistband. I think it's more <laughs> like guidelines, not exactly rules in the strongest sense. <laughs> so just keep that in mind when you're reading it. Now I haven't read mine yet. It's quite ridiculous, I'm not going to lie. Well, I guess, do we want to start with the offices, or do we want to go back to Sacred's Keep? I first would like um, that water skin, Viola. She we can go somewhere Romeo more private right for this, though. Right now? Yes. <laughs> I think we need to know what's in there. And Stan's going to regretfully pocket the candle. It's <laughs> just being discussed. <laughs> Fair enough. Was that the uh, the ready cue for an action bow? <laughs> oh, she put it away? <laughs> She said she's going to regretfully put it back. I was going pocket. to attempt to just kind of wiggle it out of her pocket. <laughs> Do it. Sure. Give Roll me, high. Give me a sleight of hand check. Okay, please. come on, dice. 18. <laughs> Plus. Wow. Listen, it's only for the bad things he could roll high. This is why he I'm does them. To, we're going to take another look behind the DM screen. So that's going to be a 21. 21 with psionic so let me know if i need to take that out <laughs> no no you don't <laughs> so does he have the book no 18 was 18 was great 18 was 18 was the dc i said oh. <laughs> and now we're gonna close the door to the dm screen <laughs> 
He's gonna mind link over to Snow. Snow, I got I got the book from Stan. What should we do with it before she reads it and realizes everything we've done? <laughs> I mean, I can literally destroy it with a cantrip. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> put it in your pack. Oh, do you want to just take All it right. from my hand? No, just slip it in my bag. I'll get it later. <laughs> okay, he, he slips it in his bag. Give me another sleight of hand check. <laughs> oh, no. And I Since will allow Snow knows that this is happening. Sure. What, do you, what would you like to do to us? A... Oh, nice. Uh, he is going to use... Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. He's going to use prestidigitation and create a shower of sparks in the opposite direction, 10 feet away. So, so that's... that's... Zayn will look in that direction. <laughs> and that's 14 with psionic. I should have allowed Zayn to roll perception, I realize. I got excited, and I will allow a perception check for, for Zayn. Bo, is that with advantage you rolled? Yeah. The first... Okay. <laughs> that was with advantage? <laughs> yes. <laughs> My first roll was an 8. I saw him bang his head, and I was like, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> My first roll was an 8, and the second one was a 9, and I got a 5 on psionic. Well, that's a 12, so... Hey! <laughs> with guidance? I don't she think doesn't she was know to cast guidance. guidance. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing right now, other than being distracted by Sparks, is taking off her glove and taking her pendant off her hand to slip it into her bag. Well, that he picked the best cast. time. All right, so it's in your bag. <laughs> Mission successful. <laughs> All right. You've uh, slipped the handbook into Snow's pack now. Oh, do you think we should be concerned about violas as well? <laughs> uh, probably shouldn't press our luck at the moment. <laughs> so we can good. grab that one later. So violas is like in her waistband. <laughs> Anything violas is can be taken <laughs> violas has with a high enough roll. Yeah. As Bo is of his gold. So, I mean, if, if Bo's gold was able to get pickpocketed after both, being tucked away yeah. under multiple different things inside of his chest, then. <laughs> All right. Where Here's are you guys cake. off to now that you've lovely built this great rapport with one another by stealing? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. So somewhere private. We could go like behind the building or something. Have you? All right. There's a garden in, in between the halls. There are side rooms. There's the studies. There's your actual barracks, wherever you guys would like to go. There was there's no one in the women's like barracks an empty earlier. Side room. Oh, we could just go to the women's barracks. But somebody could walk in at any moment, though, right? We don't want Cynthia to see this. We should. We don't want the or wizard really to see us doing else. magic stuff. <laughs> Uh, if we, can we find a side room or study or something that's empty? The broom Perception. closet. Perception checks again. Please. All right. It's bound to only get better. Twenty. A different guy this time. Hey, there we go. Eleven. Seven. You are studious enough. You guys were given a, a quick tour of the area. You know that there are some side offices further into the novice hut or peace manner. There's studies, and as you guys are peeking around, you've got some options still. The garden is entirely empty right now, but there, there are doors, multiple doors from either hallway leading to it, but the study is empty as well, and that door could maybe be locked in the meantime. There's small office that could also be locked in the meantime, or the women's barracks, which the door could also be locked. She'll lead them right to the study, like just be lining for it. Um, she made Perfect. a note of it on the tour, and... Excellent. On our next tale, Snow will sit down on the floor, take out the blood, or just like a little bit of it in his hands. You still have this mark on your hand. You use your necklace and you talk with them, and then maybe as you're hearing thoughts, you could be directing me. Okay, let's go find them. The emissary offices or something like that. I'm Bria, one of your novice emissaries. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Is she being condescending to me right now? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, please don't. Please don't. No. Please don't. Please. It's, it's been You're a long so day. Oh, she's trying to do a favor. Don't push her luck. He has trouble with people sometimes. His people skills are about as new as his magic skills, so we apologize for any offense he may have caused. Hi, Maria. Good my job. name... You're doing great. So my name <laughs> is Bo. I think, I think I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> this sounds really boring. You have fun. I'm gonna go outside. <laughs> So your friend here, so you make 
inventions. Did you want to give one of these a try? Welcome to Kepner's Command. We have so many fun things to show you.